Hello friends and welcome to Figure Study, where we are taking a look at Cybertron Downshift. Mostly because he is my new default deluxe size comparison figure. And I kind of wanted to just get this taken care of so that it was there. <laughs> and not just like, here's a random figure I've never covered before. So right off the bat, I want to say I won't be going over the cyber key gimmick and I won't be showing off the accessories. I mean, the accessories thing is typical, but I can't show off the accessories because I don't have them. I actually got this guy just as is. No cyber key, no accessories. And also his cyber key gimmick has been disabled. And I did that intentionally because it was on a hair trigger. Like, if I would transform him, just the act of snapping the torso and the waist together would cause it to pop out. And it was just getting so freaking annoying that I went in with a screwdriver, opened him up, and took the spring out. I mean, it, it, the gimmick wasn't great to begin with. It was just this little claw that, like, pops out of the front there. But having it go off at a moment's notice was just too annoying. So, yeah, no gimmick to show off. Sorry. But what I do have to show off is a really, really slick looking muscle car. <laughs> this looks fantastic. It really does. Like, I've got little gripes here and there with uh, some of the coloring, like how this bit right here is entirely black and it just kind of stands out a bit. But then you've got this bit in silver that actually blends in pretty well with the paint scheme. So it's, you know, some things are hit, some things are missed. But overall, this is a very, very nice looking muscle car. I love the contours of it kind of makes me think of like, uh, I don't know, it's it's almost like an old school Mustang crossed with an old school Barracuda. It's like little hints of various classic American muscle cars here and there. And it looks so good. I love the boxiness of it. The way it tapers up in the back a little bit. The strange kind of almost tooth-like <laughs> front where it kind of bows in and out and in again. The coloring is nice too. The green is uh, wouldn't be my first choice for a color here, but it works. And it actually seems to work pretty well with this translucent yellow that they've got going for the windows. And it's just cloudy enough that you don't see a ton of the robot junk on the inside, which I appreciate. As far as the paint goes, it's actually really well done too. There are certain bits that I would like to go in and customize myself in the future, and I might do that. But for the most part, there's a lot here. Like the silver on the rear there with the uh, brake lights done in red. I kind of want to go in and do the uh, tailpipes in silver as well, but that's for another day. The stripe deco along the side is, it's just enough to keep this from being boring along the side, but it's not overbearing like some decos could be on these types of cars. And there's the uh, door handle, which I also think would look good painted, and the side mirrors, which I think would look good painted, and the uh, kind of side lights on the rear and the front also I think could be picked out in color just to add a little bit more to it but again for another day they did paint the rims though oh and on the back you've got the silver here for the little pop-up flap for the uh, cyber key gimmick I bring in a little thing here because my nails are not going to be able to pull that up you can, uh, you can see it kind of eh. eh. there you go it kind of pops up and that's where the cyber key would go in but uh not showing off the gimmick because it doesn't work. Anyway, getting back to the front, some nice silver for the bumper and for the grill. The lights are that same translucent orange, which looks pretty good, although I feel like, again, if I were to customize this guy, I might go in there and do like white or silver behind the translucent plastic just to make them pop a little bit more because you can kind of see the green plastic bleeding through a little bit in there. And then the top is really nice, how there's this clearly denoted uh, hood in black along there. The really nice silver engine with a little bit of black to just break it up a little bit. That nice, solid Autobot logo. And then the black top that is done in a slightly different texture that also sets it apart from the rest of the car, which makes sense because usually the soft top type stuff was common in cars that are kind of from the era that this looks like it's meant to be homaging, which is like, I think the 60s and 70s. This is just a solid, solid muscle car mode. I really like it. Can't say it's my favorite of the figures I have, though, and I'll go go over that at a future date. But uh, yeah, he's, he's easily my second favorite muscle car mode out of all the figures that I have, as he's a uh, pretty slick looking. 
Size-wise, you can see he's about on par with a more modern deluxe. He's uh, a little bit longer and maybe roughly the same height, but then uh, it's also a little bit narrower. So I feel like that that's one of the reasons why I wanted to use downshift here as my deluxe size comparison, because he still sort of fits within that window of more modern deluxes. And because, of course, here he is with the duck tank. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get on to the transformation. The transformation on this guy is pretty simple because, you know, older Cybertron toy, but still very effective. And here we have Downshift in his robot mode, and it's a, it's a little awkward, but in kind of that classic, old-schoolish way that I actually find rather charming. I mean, he's clearly a robot. He does the uh, front of the car as the chest thing, although it's the entire front of the car. <laughs> it sticks out quite a bit. But like I said, in a way that I think is charming. And I like the kind of weird, overly horizontal... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shoulder pads that he's got going here. And these little arms coming down. The only thing that sucks about this is uh, he doesn't have bicep swivels. I feel like they could have put that in there, but eh, whatever. Aesthetically, though, I think it looks great. And I like how they painted a little bit of silver there to just dress up these shoulder pads a little bit. I feel like maybe there's a little bit more detail in there that they could have painted, but uh, overall, I think it looks pretty good. He's this big kind of chunky, slightly awkward, but not terribly awkward looking guy. And also, if you look at like the arms and the thighs and the head, I feel like proportionally things are okay. Like they're not great, but like they're okay. It kind of almost seems like he's a more normal sized humanoid robot with just big chunky car bits for like boots and torso armor. Looking at some of the detailing, there is some nice molded detailing throughout and some nice paint, which is good. I do, again, wish that there was a bit more. Kind of want to go in here and do some stuff, but that'll be on my own time. As I keep saying, some nice detailing around the waist and this little bit under the chest here, which doesn't fold down or anything like that. This is just there in car mode. You just don't really see it because it's under the car mode. But I like that, and I like that they painted it silver. It just adds a little bit more that you don't necessarily see from this angle, but if you're looking at them from straight on, it does work out a little bit better. And then again, like I said, the big shoulders that could use a little bit more detailing there, but that's all right. Along the back, the same molded details there, just not painted. And the arms are kind of nondescript robot arms with nondescript humanoid robot fists which, yet again, could use a little bit of paint, but that's fine. And you've got that enormous car front for a chest, which I just find charming. As for Downshift's head, I've heard it said that uh, this is basically Wheeljack, and I can totally see that. <laughs> He's definitely got the uh, what people have dubbed the slinky face and the little ears, which fold up for, uh, for when he pops his head into his torso. I do wish that his head could turn a little bit more than this, but I don't really know how they could have done that unless they had the head pop up further. But it does look nice. The uh, black and silver color combination works. The goldish color for the eyes, it's not super easy to see. Like, it's there, and if the light hits it, it's okay. But it's, uh, yeah, it's just kind of, kind of muted, kind of hidden inside all this other junk going on in his face. I kind of wish that it was either brighter or that his eyes were a bit more pronounced, like maybe came forward a little bit more. But the color separation is nice, and silver and black is always a great combination. My other gripe is the ears. I kind of wish that those weren't translucent orange plastic. I imagine it is for, like, accuracy or something, or because they're meant to, like, glow when he talks, like the original Wheeljack. But the problem is... This canopy hanging off his back is that same translucent orange plastic that's been painted extremely well, I would like to point out, has been painted extremely well, but on the underside it's just translucent orange plastic, and when you're looking at him from some angles, those ears kind of get lost, because they're the same color and shade as the plastic behind him. 
And that's a bit of an unfortunate thing. I just, it would have been nice if these were colored differently to stand out a bit more, or if this was either folded down more or colored differently to stand out more. But overall, he still looks nice. I still very much like the robot mode. Like I said, he's got this kind of classic Transformer feel to him that's like slightly awkward, but in a charming way. Moving on to size comparisons, here you can also see why I wanted to use Downshift as my new size comparison staple, because he's more or less the same height, and in some cases, similar build to a more modern Deluxe. Yeah, to the head he's a little bit shorter, but if we're going up to the block hanging off his back, it's pretty much the same height. And bringing in a more modern Deluxe, or slightly more modern, you can see that again, he's like, especially here with the uh, Skytread, it's practically head to head in terms of height. I know Skytreads, he's not short for a Deluxe, but I know there are some taller modern Deluxes like Siege Ironhide, but still, I feel like this makes for a pretty good standard. And here he is standing next to the duck tank. So that's going to do it for Cybertron. How did I forget his name already? Downshift. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Cybertron Downshift. He's cool. I really like him. And it's funny, I actually for a little while had Big Daddy, which was the uh, repaint version of this guy that was primarily black with a little bit of orange and purple. And I liked the colors. I liked the color scheme of Big Daddy a little bit better, but the deco on Downshift is so much better. I'm not super into the pea green. I think we had a refrigerator that was close to this color when I was growing up. <laughs> it's very 70s, but I think overall the way the color is used works a lot better here. And even without his accessories and without his gimmick, he is very fun. Fun to mess with, fun to transform, fun to look at on a shelf in either mode. But that is enough of my rambling. What do you all think of Cybertron Downshift? Do any of you out there have a preference whether it comes to Downshift or Big Daddy? And what do you think of, I think it's Energon Downshift? I think it's Energon. It could be Armada. It's one of the other lines that was either before or after Cybertron that had Downshift in it, and he was in a much more typical, like, Wheeljack kind of color scheme. And I'm curious what you all think of that, because I've actually kind of been toying with the idea, no pun intended, of getting that version of Downshift as well, because I think it looks neat, but... I probably won't be using the Power Link feature at all, because that would be the only Power Link character that I would have. But I think as a standalone, he looks kind of neat. Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And while you're at it, also feel free to like, subscribe, or if you're feeling generous, you can buy me a coffee. There's also a link to that down below. Any of those things would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art is more than meets the eye. <laughs>